Hello, welcome back to another Easy PV training video. Today we're going to be taking a look at our brand new 3D design tool. The team have been working on this over the past few months and we know many of you have been looking forward to giving it a go. So we're very excited to finally be able to release it. Now it's important to know that the version is being released in beta, which means we're going to continue working on the tool to improve it. And in order to do that, we're going to be hopefully taking a lot of feedback from yourselves. So if you do have any thoughts on the tool or if you're running into any technical issues, we'd really appreciate it if you could let us know. And we'll be taking feedback via the following email, which is hello at easy-pv.co.uk. Now, this tool is going to allow you to create a 3D model of your customer's building or buildings and you can also then model any obstructions that are in the nearby area such as tall buildings or trees now there's a few things you can do with this model not only can you give a visualization of it to the customer so they can understand where the array is going what it's going to look like but it also gives you the opportunity to see how the array or arrays are going to be affected by shading from the obstructions that you add into the design. Then we'll see a little bit later into the project that we can actually use this data to automatically populate the shading factor during the shade analysis section of the performance task. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the tool. We're gonna to start by creating a new project as you would normally. And when you click new project, you'll notice that we've had a little refresh to how this looks. And you'll also see that under the design mode section, we now have our third 3D model option here as well. We've left in the other two options for creating a roof design as there might still be situations in which you need to use either of those. Um, obviously we're gonna be focusing on the 3D one today. So if you go ahead and pop in a customer's address and then set from address, that's going to zoom you into that property as normal. And this time when we click go, we're going to get brought into the 3D design studio. So before we get started, I'm just going to give you a little tour of what we have available here. So over on the left hand side, you'll see that we actually have a little toolbar which is going to allow us to drag on different types of roofs. So we've got dual roofs, dual pitch roofs, uh, single hit, double hit, flat roofs, etc. We also then have the option to add in extensions that are coming off the main building. We've also got the option to add in dormers. And then there's also a miscellaneous section here where we can add obstructions like chimneys, vents, roof lights, and also trees in the nearby area as well. Uh, in the middle, you've got your satellite image view. Um, this is orientated to north, so you can actually see the orientation of the roof spaces you have available to you. And then over on the right hand side, we've got two views. We've got a 3D view, which is where we're going to actually see our model come to life as we begin to build it and we also have an elevations view which is actually going to allow us to change the height of objects that we add to the design so i'm going to zoom in on my property to see what i'm working with here so as you can see i've actually got a dual pitched roof with no hips as the main sort of section of my building so i'm going to go over to the roofs section on the left and I'm going to drag in a dual pitched building. And as you can see, that's now populated onto my 3D view. You can actually move this around a little bit. And I've also can see it on my elevations view. Again, I can zoom in and out a little bit, twist it around if I need to. And you'll see I've actually got the option to increase the ridge height and also increase the height of the bottom edge of the pitch as well. Uh, which is going to affect the pitch degree. I can also actually click on the pitch degree and set that immediately here as well. So if I know that my roof pitch here is 30 degrees, I can just set that straight away, making sure that my ridge height is also correct. 
Now then, my roof's facing, or oh, sorry, my building is uh, rotated the wrong way. So I'm going to use this little rotation tool to actually just spin that around. And what I'm going to try and do here is line up this center line with the angle of the ridge on the satellite image as best as possible. So that's, that's pretty good there. And then what I can do is I can use these sort of corner tools here to actually drag out my building to the length that we can see on the satellite image, like so. Just do your best to get that as accurate as possible. Okay, something like that. Again, I'm looking at the main satellite image along with the 3D view and my elevations um, viewpoints here just to see what's going on as we make changes. Now, at this point, what I could do is now start to add in my extension. So we can see we've got a dual pitch extension here on the left, and it looks like we've got a little smaller one coming out on the right as well. So I'm going to add in both of these now. So going over to the extension section, I'm going to pull over the dual pitch extension. And as I drag that closer to the roof, it's actually going to snap on like so, which is what you want it to do. So I'm going to let go once that snapped on like so. And again, I've lined up that center line with the ridge there as best as possible. And again, on my elevations view, I can see that is now sort of populated here and on the 3D view as well. Now then, what I want to do is make sure that this is an appropriate size. So again, I'm going to extend the length of this out slightly Okay, as best as we can get it and then pull this out to the edge there and then what I'm also going to do which is quite important is I'm going to pull the width of this extension right into the roof in line with where it makes contact with my original roof. Now then again on the elevations view I can edit my pitch degree so if I want to go ahead and make sure that that's 30 degrees and I can add that in like so. OK, but what we actually want to do first is bring the uh, height of this extension right up to match how it looks on the satellite image here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this top option here on my elevations view. and I'm going to drag that right up to where it intercepts with my building like so. Then I could do the same to follow up with the bottom edge of the roof pitch here and that's actually going to snap on to be the same height as my original building's roof edge. Okay and as you can see from my 3D view we're starting to get a building model that looks very similar to what we've got here on the satellite image. Now it's worth mentioning that at any point throughout your design you can actually click on the sort of expansion buttons in the top right of the views here to focus on a different viewpoint of your design. So I can open up the 3D view here or I could open up the elevations view, which is going to allow you to make sort of minor adjustments a little bit more easily and you can focus on one thing at a time. So going back to my plan view then, you can see you can also change the position of the entire building if you need to. Uh, I'm actually going to populate this sort of right hand extension here. Now I think obviously if you'd performed a site visit you'd know this for sure but I can see that this extension does not actually reach the height of the original building. So what I'm going to do is add in another dual pitch extension here again snapping that on to the building and this time I'm actually going to just again increase its depth and set the width in line with the satellite image and using my elevations view I'm just going to bring the pitch of this down to 30 degrees or adjust it just like so. What I'm going to do is actually set it in line with the bottom ridge of my roof before then determining the pitch degree like so. Okay, and as you can see, then I've got my smaller extension there as well. Okay, so now I'm in a position where I've actually designed out the sort of main sections of my building here. And what I'm going to do now is start to add some of the obstructions that are visible here. So we've actually got a chimney, what looks like a vent, 
and also a roof light or this Velux window here on that smaller right hand side extension. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to be nice and accurate and over on my miscellaneous um, options here there's an option to drag in a chimney that looks like it's actually an appropriate size. Again if you had the measurements of that chimney you could use the elevations view here to change its height. Okay. I'm also then going to drag in this vent, make that slightly larger, like so. And then I'm also going to drag in a roof light and put that over here on my extension and just change that to be an appropriate size, like so. So then, as you can see, in uh, not a lot of time, I've actually uh, gone ahead and made my model of my customer's building here. Now, one thing that I've forgotten to add so far is um, the trees that are in the local area. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to the miscellaneous options and add in a tree. There's a fairly large one here, so I'm just going to add this tree. And again, these are going to pop up on my 3D model here. Again, I have options to change the elevation of that tree if I have that information available to me. And I'm actually just going to go around and add a few more. as per where they sit on this satellite image. Okay, something like that. Okay, now I feel like I'm in a comfortable position. I'm happy with my 3D model. Again, we can take a closer look at it here. And what I could do now is actually go ahead and click Next, and that's gonna allow me to move on to adding some panels to my roof. Before we click next, actually, it's also worth noting that if you do need to make any changes specifically to the roofs or to the obstructions, you can, of course, delete them by selecting them individually. And in this top right menu on the satellite image view, you're gonna have the name of the object and an option to delete it. You also will have the option to choose the roof material type as well. Okay, so that's of course going to affect potentially the type of mounting options that are available to you later in the design task. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've set the appropriate options there. Okay, and then if I go ahead and click next, it's then gonna bring up this portal here, which is actually going to give me a rating between poor or good on sort of how suitable these roof spaces are for some solar panels. So you can actually see we've got roof south here, roof east, roof west, okay? All sort of appropriate roofs, not perfect of course. It's gonna take into consideration their orientation. Um, but of course we're limited to space here, so I'm actually gonna select uh, roof west as well. I want to add some panels to that, so I'm just gonna click on this little tick option there that and then if I go ahead and click next it will bring me to this page here which should be familiar to you um, if not we have additional instructional videos for this design task which you can find underneath our drop down help menu okay but this is obviously the part in which you could then go ahead and add some panels to your design so again you can auto fill this or you could add them in manually okay and then, of course, from here, you could move on to complete the rest of your design as you normally would. Now, before we do that, I'm actually going to go back to tasks and choose my buildings task again. And what's really cool is actually now if I go back to my 3D view, you can actually see the panels on the design in the top right here. Again, if I expand this out. OK, we can come to this page here or again, you can expand it even further. And we can come to this sort of area in which we can actually see the sort of projected sun path that's being visualized here. And we can actually see some of the shading that's then going to be present due to these obstructions and the trees as well. Now, you can speed this up or slow it down. OK. Uh, you can also move around the camera using your left click to move it around like so and you can also use your right click to sort of move left and right and up and down as well okay so you can get a really good view 
of the building and your arrays. Now then, you can also change the weather. It's just a fun little thing you can do there if you want to. Uh, and the other thing we can do, actually, if we hit pause, you'll see we're on the 11th of May at half three in the afternoon. Well, down in the bottom right, you'll then have access to this 3D sun path diagram. And if you actually click on this, we can look at the shading that's going to be present on our property throughout different times of the day and through different times of the year as well. Okay, so you can come in and have a little look at that as well. Now, the last thing that you can do on this page is you can take a snapshot of the building as well. So uh, an image that's actually going to save to your computer and that can be used to then show to your customer who can then get a really good idea, a really good sense of what their array is actually going to look like. So using this little camera button in the top right corner, you click on that, it's actually going to give you the option to save that as an image on your computer. Okay, so that is just one example of creating a building in our new 3D design tool. Now, of course, every building is going to be different and there's going to be different techniques that you'll have to utilize to do different designs. So we suggest that you simply go and have a test, go and have a play around. And again, like we mentioned before, we'd really love to hear your feedback on this. So please do get in touch. Now, something that I'd also just like to cover before the end of this training session is another feature that we have included, which is a land parcel feature. So the land parcel, which you can find in the miscellaneous section, is actually going to allow you to define out an area that your customer owns of a particular building. So if you're working with an attached house, rather than actually drawing out that property separately as its own building, what you could do is potentially uh, 3D model the entire row of buildings and you could actually use that land parcel feature just like so. I'm going to click it from the miscellaneous section and drag it on to the section of the set of buildings that is owned by my customer. Okay, and reshape that. You could even drag it out to include the garden as well. And then when I click next, what you'll notice is that it's only going to give me the option to add panels to that specific area of our model. Okay, so if you are working on attached or semi-detached houses, then you can also use this feature to define specific areas that you can actually add panels to. Okay, so with that covered, that's going to end this training video. Uh, well done to anyone who made it this far. It was a little bit of a longer one. Uh, obviously, with it being a slightly more complex feature, we wanted to make sure we took the time to show you exactly how to use it. Again, just a reminder about providing feedback if you have some. And lastly, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.